Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for taking time to join. I am Todd Bookspan, and I see a lot of familiar names on the attendee list and some names I don't know. So I am the founder of Win by Noon, and super excited you're all here. Um, this is a webinar that's for all of you, and I uh, want you guys to participate. Um, if you look over on the right of GoToMeeting, you can see there's a questions and answer panel. So if somebody could just tell me that you can hear me over in questions, that would be great just to make sure that the audio is working. I'm uh, kind of always excited to start off and you guys can see me and I can smile and wave. Awesome. Thanks, Sue. I, you guys can hear me. Oh, my collar doesn't look good. All right. Okay. Thanks, guys. I'll fix that too. Maybe that's not good either. But, um, but I'm really excited about uh, you know spending some time with you guys. Um, I've done uh, many webinars for the loan officer version of Wind by Noon, and this is the first real estate agent version done on the web. I've actually taught it one-on-one uh, -on -one with agents and I've taught it to a classroom of agents, uh, but I'm excited to kind of walk you all through it, uh, sort of modified my loan officer version of it. Hopefully this will be even better for all of us. And uh, again, this is for you guys. Uh, you can always raise your hand and I can bring you in live. Probably the best place where I'll moderate for right for now is from the uh, question panel. So if you guys have questions along the way, I'll attempt to pay attention uh, to that. But uh, my goal is to kind of jump in and run. Those of you who know me know I talk really fast, so I'm going to do my best to slow down slightly, uh, so that way you guys can uh, make sure it all makes sense, and then um, kind of walk you through it. So, you know, I, uh, I've got my copy here, so I'll be using this as my reference, but I've got a PowerPoint that I'm going to throw up in just a sec so that you guys can uh, see it, and I'm, I'm kind of excited. I'm going to start with a quick poll, so I'm going to pull myself off for a minute, and then I'm going to throw up this poll. And I would love it if you guys would just take a minute and answer it. Actually, I've got two polls for you guys. Um, first off, let's take a look here and uh, actually we might just do one poll. Let's just see. Um, okay, here's a poll. If you guys could all just take a minute and vote on your screens. So I just want to know, are you experienced with Win by Noon or you are brand spanking new or somewhere in between? Um, if you guys could just take a minute and uh, vote. Um, if I could just get a couple more of you to vote, we'll have a good... Uh, a good mixture here. So, um, all right, let's see if I can close the poll and show it to you guys or not. Um, all right, I don't know how to show it to you guys because I'm not that experienced. Oh, it's share results. Check this out. Look how good I am. Um, so we've got 38% of you are experienced. So thank you guys for uh, being here and being part of today. Um, some of you have your Q4 and ready to begin and about half of you are brand new. So that's, um, that is awesome. So super excited to have uh, all levels of folks here. Um, I'm going to go now and switch in here. So one of you'll notice I'm not a professional webinar person. So that's, uh, that's number one. And then number two is that, uh, you know, I'm a pretty transparent guy. So when I'm, when I speak at something, I'll tell you, but uh, I've gotten pretty good at this. I've hosted or co-hosted about 50 webinars over the past year. And uh, when I do those, we have a, a person who sits behind the scenes and actually makes us look really good. Um, and so I don't have that here today, but now you guys should be able to see, just a slide that says win by noon. If you can't see that, let me know there in the questions. Um, sometimes the slides move slower than I talk, so I'll try to, I'll try to move us through them um, so that we all kind of see those. So um, welcome is the first slide. Um, okay, so here's really the best plan, uh, today's plan. I guess it's the best plan, best practices. So um, we are going to kind of walk you guys through what I see as best practices of using this and for those of you who don't know, I created kind of a, in my own notebook, I created uh, a version of Win by Noon that, um, that I carried around for a couple of years and I tracked these things myself and with my team since uh, 2013 um, and then with the team as a whole, like starting 2014. So I've got a long-term history with this and so the best practices are gonna be based off of that and then now off of the feedback that I have of people using the live product for the last uh, three plus months how I designed it and why. That's why you'll hear the plus months part. Um, Q&A and what's next. So it's going to sound really corny, but best practice number one is to carry it with you. And, um, you know, it's crazy to me oftentimes when I talk to people who are struggling. And so I've got a lot of individuals using the planner. I've got lots of teams using the planner and I've got lots of branches using the planner. And the number one feedback I find when I'm talking to someone who's struggling with it is I ask them sort of, well, you know, what are you doing with it? And they're like, oh, well, you know, it's in my backpack and it's, or it's at home or something like that. So you got to carry it with you so that you can use it and take notes and, and have it be part of your life. Um, you know, I'm a nerd. I carried my notebook um, when I was um, in sales, uh, you know, into dinner. I mean, I had it with me. If I had an idea or I had a thought, I was able to use it. And ironically, what I find is, is that the people who are 
struggling to get traction is because they don't really have it with them. They haven't made it part of their lives. And, um, you know, you, not everyone wants to carry something with them, but I say do it. Um, and best practice number two is to embrace all of it, right? So um, I'll kind of talk through the journey of how we came up with what we're tracking in the real estate agent edition. But what I found on the loan officer side is, is that people who actually tried everything and then after you try everything, um, then you adapt. You adapt it to you best practice number three because it's not all going to be perfect for everyone. Uh, what I'm finding is, is that most people find that 80 to 90% of the journal, the way it's done, works perfectly for them. And there are some people who are like, I just did it 100% and I'm all in. But, you know, I tend to find that there's some parts of the planner that people think, gosh, you know what, um, I don't need the full weekly calendar because I'm using Outlook for that. But then they still use the daily calendar. Someone says, oh, I don't really like the gratitude part. That's not who I am. That's fine. Don't use that. But but try it, right? And so um, we got some themes, different days of the week to do different different parts of the business, you know, that we talk through in here. And, and, and if that works for you, great. If it doesn't work for you, maybe it won't. My easy example there is on the loan officer side, we've got um, prospecting or a client update date and realtor update days on Tuesdays. And I've got other um, people who are using the planner and they say, gosh, you know, what? I think that's a great practice, but I do it on Friday. So, well, that's awesome. I mean, you can adapt. It's not, you know, my way or the highway. This is about you and coming up with a better way for you to do business so that you can actually get it all done. Um, and then I would gauge with our community, right? Share your best practices and struggles because I think that you can learn from each other. I've really found that by connecting people in the community, we've all been able to learn. Um, we've got a secret Facebook group. Uh, I don't know if that's the right setting for it. I'm not a Facebook expert, but right now, if you want to be in it, someone has to invite you or you have to be my friend. So find me on Facebook, Todd Bookspan. I'm happy to be your friend and I'll add you to the, the Facebook group. It's just kind of getting rolling. And since I'm not friends with everyone, it's got, you know, like one tenth of the users in there, but we're going to get everyone in there. So uh, share. Um, and then last is share the love with an accountability partner. And so where I'm seeing the most traction is where someone's either engaging with the community or they're engaging with um, someone else in their office or with their team or their branch. And so definitely find an accountability partner. Um, I've got some of you who are emailing me and I'm kind of quasi serving as um, your um, partner too. Um, I hear the PowerPoint is stuck. Um, I'm not quite sure where we are stuck, so that's not good. Um, I'm showing best practice number five. And, and as I said early on, sometimes go to meeting just moves kind of slow. Um, so I'm hoping it'll catch up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep rolling for just one minute and I'm going to kind of talk about um, how I designed it and why I'll kind of pause here for a second. So um, that way you guys can kind of see it. I don't think you've missed anything yet. I'll make sure when we get to the pages and we're actually looking at the internal guts of it that we can, uh, that I stay on there for a while and then we, we keep rolling. But, um, you know, I really designed it because um, I've seen that accountability and tracking um, and conversion rates in particular help people uh, grow, right? You know, I know we've all been there where we've gotten to the end of the day and we've missed our most important priority of the day because we got distracted by the chaos. We were reacting all day, whether it's a buyer or a seller with a problem or a bad home inspection or an appraisal issue or offer and counter offer. Something came up that distracted you. You were in the office and one of your coworkers came in and bothered you. Um, and so what I found is when people set their intentions um, for the week and for the day um, that we're able to really dive in and um, and accomplish more. I mean, that's really what that's really what we're all after. We're all just trying to be the best we can be every day. Um, but if you're not really sitting there and planning out what your day and week are going to look like, it's less likely you're going to get to the destination you're looking for. Um, you know, when you get in a, in your car and you put your GPS on, um, you don't just say, "Hey, get me somewhere by where I'm going." You actually put in the location you're trying to go. And so, really, the planner is to help you focus on those activities that are going to drive your business and get you. Uh, really further ahead. And then when we add in the piece with conversion rates, when someone tells me, hey, I want to help, you know, 24 families this year with homes, if you don't really know how many people you have to talk to in order to sell one home, then how are you going to figure out what activities you need to do to sell 24 homes? And so you won't know after one quarter exactly what that roadmap looks like, but you will know over time of tracking exactly what activities create the results that you're after. Um, and so the easy thing for me is since my team has been tracking it for so long, I can tell the members of my team exactly how many phone calls it takes to get a lead. I can tell them exactly how many phone calls or how many leads it takes to get an application, how many applications it gets to get a pre-qualified buyer, how many pre-qualified buyers to get a to get a closed loan. Um, and so when we do goals for the quarter, when we do goals for the year, it's pretty easy to back into, hey, here's the activity required. You need this many leads in order to close this many transactions. You need to make this many calls, talk to this many people in order to get there. And so 
Um, the system really does work if you buy into that part of it. You may say, well, I don't want to track my calls. Great. That's the adapt part. You don't have to, but you're going to track your leads. You're not tracking your leads to figure out how many leads you need to get a, a buyer or how many leads you need to get a, a listing. Then it's going to be a challenge for you to um, really determine how much activities are required to get the number of closings that you want to get in a year. And so um, when I created this, I created this doing three things. Um, conversations, observations, in a rough draft version. And so when I said that loan officers have been doing this for three plus months, is I've actually had, had loan officers testing out a version that I printed on paper that I handed to them uh, for almost a year ahead of launching the planner. And then I actually created a rough draft in quarter two that I had loan officers testing that was the actual product, got their feedback before we put out the loan officer version. Same thing happened with the real estate agent version. Um, right off the bat, it was, it was conversations with realtors. Uh, what are you tracking? And I went to individual agents who were doing less than 12 transactions a year. I went to individual agents who are closing 30 plus transactions a year. I went to um, teams that are closing uh, hundreds of transactions a year, big teams, small teams. Um, and I really asked them, what is it you're tracking yourself or with your team? Um, and then I observed, right? I actually spent time one-on-one -on -one with the realtors. I spent one-on-one -on -one time in the real estate offices to really look at what it is that they're doing and how, how they do it so that we could come up with a product that really fit. And so again, 100% of the things that we put in here may not be things that you care about or you do, but I'm saying that most of them are the things you care about. Um, there's a blank in there for the things that we forgot to think about. and would love your feedback if you could think of anything else that you would do differently. And then um, additionally, um, we did the rough draft version with them. So then I created a version of it, I put it out there, and I let, I let people use it, and then I actually observed them using it. I met with them one-on-one -on -one to see how they were using it and got feedback before we put out the official version. Um, and then we just learned a few things like um, the to-do, to-call, task list, and a full page of notes where we kind of boxed it in the first version of the loan officer where there wasn't enough of those two things. Um, and now we created that in all the Q Q4 versions of both. Um, and so hopefully that, you know, that sort of makes sense. You know, one thing that I had of being a loan officer for 15 years is I spent a lot of time with real estate agents. I actually spent time working in real estate offices, um, you know, big real estate offices where I was actually the loan officer sitting in there. So I observed individual agents in there. And then I also spent a lot of time uh, with teams where I'd actually sit in the team's office and I would be there while they did their lead generation in the morning and, and they were focused on that. And ironically, a lot of that win by noon came from watching how those agents did it realizing that some of those things I could put into my own practice and make successful. But, you know, the interesting thing was is that the, I found the agents who were laser focused on those critical activities in the morning were the ones who were growing their business, the ones who were hitting their goals, the ones who were putting up big numbers. Um, and lo and behold, uh, they won by noon. And so that's, you know, again, part of what we got going on here. So I call it macro to micro. So it goes monthly to weekly to daily. Um, and then we create review. And so, um, what I mean by that is we start with a quarter ahead action plan where we're looking at your whole quarter. Um, and then we go, that's macro. And then we go a little bit smaller. We go to the week, right? What am I going to do this week, right? What's important to me? What are my goals for the week? And then lastly, we go to the day, right? What am I doing today? Um, and then we review it. We review it at the end of the week. We do a weekly review. At the end of the month, we do a monthly review. And at the end of the quarter, we do the quarterly review. And we're tracking progress. And we're going to track progress against ourselves first and foremost, right? Again, it doesn't matter to me um, as much you know, how the realtor in the, in the office next to me is doing or across the country, what is their conversion rate to, compared to mine? That is important because you do want to know how you're doing against your peers. But what's most important is, is that your conversion rate improves uh, week over week, month over month, year over year, so that you can just get better and grow. And that's where the review part is critical. Um, and then um, we're going to build an online community um, starting early next year where we'll, where we'll be tracking conversion rates. We're going to bucket uh, you all into different groups. You'll self-select into a group. I've got some um, agents who focus on new home sales. I've got some agents who focus solely online. I've got some agents who just do repeat referral business and are really high touch. And then I've got some who are a combination. And so we'll actually bucket these different groups. We'll track overall conversion rates, and then we'll track by this type of group that you self-select yourself into. And I think that'll be a fun way for us as a community to all learn and grow together. So stay tuned for that. Um, all right, so I'm hearing the PowerPoint is still stuck. That is not good. I'm on the daily tracker page. I just clicked the button. So if someone could tell me when and if the daily tracker page actually shows up, that would be great. Um, let's see if that happens. So I'm going to just talk for a moment because some of you may or may not have it. 
Um, one thing that I'll tell you guys is that if you actually look, there's also a handout section here in the um, GoToMeeting panel. Um, in, in the GoToMeeting panel, I put two handouts in there. One is the instruction book for the real estate agent version, and the other is the instruction book for the loan officer version. So the reason I have that on there is twofold. Number one is because um, all of you are here because you want to learn about the real estate agent version. Um, and some of you are actually loan officers who are here who are learning how to teach the real estate agent version to your favorite real estate agent. Um, so that is good. I'm just pausing for one sec to read questions there. Um, all right, someone says I didn't hit play on my PowerPoint. All right, let's check that out. If that's, oh, there's no play button on here, so that's not good. So um, can you guys just tell me which slide are you currently seeing? Let's do this. Check this out. I got an idea. This is what I love about live webinars is, you know, you got to kind of, kind of got to roll with it. I'm going to get out of my presenter mode of GoToMeeting. So now you see it a different way, and then I'm going to click back on this, and then now I'm going to put it back into presenter mode. And then you guys tell me now if you can see the daily tracker page. All right, so let's put them on the first slide. Yeah, that was pretty bad. All right, so um, I'll make sure that I upload in there later because I can't multitask um, the actual slides that I did as well. So you guys have um, a copy of these. I'll email them to all of you attendees. Um, but did, can anyone tell me if we actually have the daily tracker slide up? Yes. All right. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Whew, I'm feeling a little better. Um, like I said, I, I, uh, I'm new to this webinar thing running it myself. Like I said, I've been on so many of them where someone else ran it. And they did all the technological stuff. But I do know that always PowerPoint lags. But I'll make sure that I, uh, I'll do what I just did each slide and make sure that it that it proceeds and I'll reach out to the GoToMeeting folks for maybe a better best practice on how to make this uh, move a little more efficiently. So, um, so there's a couple of things. I'm not going to spend the talk about the days of the week piece of it today, um, but the days of the week piece, if you look into the instructions, I kind of have some suggested based on conversations with realtors and observations of realtors, um, how people are integrating this into their lives. And so I believe that a day of the week theme is really helpful because a day of the week theme um, just, you just know, hey, today's my day to do X. Today's my day that I'm going to do real estate reviews. Today's the day that I'm going to follow back up with my database um, who bought a house a year ago, and I'm going to give them an update on, on a, in a new CMA of what their house is worth today um, and start a conversation with them because I know if I start that conversation with them, number one is they're going to view me as their trusted advisor. I know number two is that they're going to be excited about the appreciation that their house had. And number three is, I know that they're going to think of me going forward for referrals from friends and family, anyone buying or selling a home, and I have an opportunity to engage with them. So, um, so that's such a great opportunity. Um, and I think if you create a day of the week to do it, where you just say, this is what my rhythm is, this is what I'm going to do, that's where I see most people have success versus, hmm, I think today I'm just going to do a real estate review or two. Um, it just has to be part of your rhythm. But I'm, I'm going to... I reversed up how I did this. I've been teaching this from quarterly down to daily, and, I, and I'm reversing it up today. So for those of you who were on my webinar last week for loan officers, this is the opposite because I realize people don't understand what these things are. And I'm going to sort of, sort of start giving a quick overview, and then I'm going to dig into the daily activity pieces and sort of what they are and why. Um, so starting on the left, you'll see there's, that, there's your daily time block. And again, this is one of those things where 80% of the people, like 81 or 82%, use the time block piece of the calendar. Ironically, not everyone does because some people say, I'm not going to take the time to write down what's on my phone calendar and put it in there. Um, I just see that. I love it. It's a graphical thing for me every day. Um, if I show you live my, you know, my personal one, it shows from 9 to 10 a.m., which in my time zone is what time it is, you know, that I've got real estate agent win by noon webinar on there. And so, you know, for me, I just look at it visually. I know exactly what's going on. And so I like the, I like the idea of uh, the visual calendar. Uh, I was going to shrink it up. I had showed it to some people and they're like, no, no, keep it big, exactly that size. And so that is where it's at. Um, at the top, you see two different things. Today's top three and I'm grateful for. And so um, some of you came to me through Darren Hardy's insane productivity that I did with Mortgage Coach. And, you know, Darren, for those of you who don't know, is the former publisher of Success Magazine. He wrote the book, The Compound Effect, and he has a product called Insane Productivity. And Darren's a friend of mine, and I, did, I was part of the Mortgage Coach launch for the mortgage-specific version of it. And long story short, Darren talks about your vital few in there. What are those, what are those three functions that are my most important function? Um, and so you'll see that on our, um, on, our, our, on our 
stuff consistently for the for the month, for the week. Like, what is it that's most important to me? Sometimes that's a person. Sometimes that's an activity. Sometimes that's a thing. And then I kind of broke it down to the daily piece of it. Right? Like, what's what is most important today for me to do? What are those top three things? You know, sometimes it could be the same thing over and over again, or sometimes it could be different. You know, mine say um, the webinar. Right? The webinar for me is my number one thing today. Um, you know, family time is the other one. As I was um, gone for the last two days traveling, and so connect with my family, uh, make sure that I that I have good good connections with them. And I'm going to close loops for sales mastery because I'm heading to California next week for a mortgage specific conference with Win by Noon, and uh, just make sure I get the the final planning for that done. Right? It could be different for you each day. Um, I went on this productivity kick at the end of last year for six months, and I read just about every possible productivity book that was out there. Well, that's not possible because I think there's like 16 million of them, but um, but I read a lot of them, and every one of them had some way that they said, what are the top three things I need to do today? What are my top three responsibilities? And so I thought that was critical to have that in there. Um, what am I grateful for? Huge request. When people said, gosh, I don't want to give up my other day planner. I love it. It's super motivational, and it, it has what is – what is what am I grateful for today? And you know, there's that old saying that you cannot be uh, mad about something and grateful for something else at the same time. You know, your mind can't do those two opposite things. And so, um, again, it's been a hugely popular thing, and I love doing that each day of, of what I'm grateful for. Um, I'm going to flip to the very bottom there real quick because that's kind of the flip side to it, right? So I I do the grateful in the morning, and at the end I've got high or highs of my day. Um, something I learned from Daniel Harkview, founded Building Champion. Daniel plays a game called. He calls it low high. I call it high low. You know, it's like glass half empty, glass half full. Um, but we play it every night at the dinner table, and it's um, what are the what were the highs of my day and what were the lows of my day. And so we go around as a group and say it. So like my daughter typically says something about school being the low of her day, or something she heard about at school being the low of her day. And then the high of the day would be a, you know some friend, something she was with one of her friends, or maybe dinner with our family, or you know something that came in the mail, whatever that is. Um, but I kind of like it because again, it's a great way to end the day. Like what what was the high of my day? What you know what did I what did I kill it on? You know who who influenced me? What was that? What was that like? Um, and then the middle part here is the activity tracker, right? I mean, this is sort of where the rubber hits the road. And I think it's the heart of win by noon. It's the heart of the accountability piece. It's the start of how do I determine what my conversion rates are, right? All these things that are really, um, that are really important, right? It is super important that you are, you, you get your arms around these things. And so I call it cradle the grave, right? I really want to know how many times do I literally have to pick up the phone and call people in order to get a, a closed transaction. Um, and again, I see this in every sales industry. There's some form of conversations on the phone, proactive activity um, in getting this done. And so, um, you know, for Realtors, we divided that up into two groups, right? Database calls. You guys should be calling your database, right? There's different theories of how often to do that. That's not my job to debate. Um, but it's, it's a little doubt that if you're not calling your database, your clients who consider you their trusted advisor, that you're probably not going to get the next transaction. Um, and so how many of those do I need to do in a day? How many leading client calls do I need to do in a day? And we're just going to track those. That's literally a, a dial. It's not much more than that. And some people are like, oh, I don't want to track the dial. That's too much work. You know, I would say do it, try it. Um, and, and it's like 97% of people are using this feature. So I'm really excited about that part of it. Um, and again, it's just checking the box because I want to know really how many calls do I have to make in order to get a lead, right? I mean, that's, that's important. How many calls do I have to make in order to get a closed transaction at the end of the year? Um, lead and client calls, again, pretty self-explanatory. Now, keep in mind, right, so if you are buying leads online, right, you've got some kind of lead generation, someone that's giving you leads, you may make more lead and client calls than somebody who is working their sphere, right, and getting less leads. And that's okay. Again, that's why it's not a competition. Um, it's just getting the knowledge and getting the results. Um, and then you'll see there's two sections below there. There's quality conversations, and there are buyer and seller presentations. Um, so quality conversation is... Um, a conversation that I connected with somebody. And so, you know, I've been to some sales trainings like Bold with Keller Williams, and they actually want to, they track contacts. This isn't a contact. In, in Bold, if you got a hold of somebody on the phone, on your dialer, and you said, hey, you know, my name is Todd. I work with XYZ Realty. Are you thinking about selling it? You know, we're, we have a buyer in your neighborhood. Um, and we, we need a house to sell. You know, that, that script, and the person hangs up on you, they consider that a contact. That's not what this is. This is a quality conversation. This is when I get that person or any person that um, that's a business partner or a client or someone in my database or a lead, and I actually just connect with them over something. Um, it could just be, hey, you know what? My buddy Joe um, said you're thinking about, about selling your home. Um, I'd just love to, you know, set up an appointment to, 
to come and meet with you and they say, awesome, yes, we want to sell our home, can you come by tomorrow night at five o'clock? Or they ask me other questions about commission or whatever, you know, they all ask. Um, but it's kind of a connection with a client. Um, and again, we're just trying to get a gauge of, you know, how many people do I need to talk to in a day in order to get the results um, that I'm after? Um, I'm always asked if a text message counts, and I say maybe, right? You get to determine for you what a quality conversation is. And I do have a lot of people who consider text messages because that's how they're communicating with a lot of their clients. And again, it's not like, you know, hey, is this Joe? And he answers back and says yes. And I go, oh, awesome, that was a quality conversation. It could be, you know, an update um, between you and your client about, um, about their home inspection. Or it could be you having a conversation with a lead who you haven't been able to get on the phone, but you're all of a sudden connecting with them on text and setting up a time um, to talk to them or maybe answering their questions about first-time home buyer programs or their neighborhood that they want to live in. And so um, all I say is, is just pick a way that you're going to track it and be consistent with that. Uh, Buyer-seller presentation is just that, right? I mean, you got to know what your conversion rate is when you're meeting with a buyer or seller to getting them closed, right? If you have, you know, if you're meeting with 10 different people in a week and you're only selling one deal, then you know you got a 10% conversion rate. But And then you got to know how many of those do you need to do in a week if you're trying to increase your business, right? You're trying to double your business, then you need 20, right, in order to have that, you know, get, get two deals out of it. Um, my thinking on that always is, is twofold, right? Number one is you want to know it so you can work on improving it, right? Find someone else who's got a meeting one-on-one -on -one with, with their uh, potential listings and they're closing a higher percentage from you, right? What is their listing presentation as and compared to yours? What can you do to sharpen it? Um, and then also then the, the quantity piece, right? How many do I have to do to get where it is that I'm trying to go? Um, and this is where the team leaders I'm seeing um, with their team are able to sort of track and predict their future pipeline and they're able to coach their uh, realtors on their team on, on their interactions, right? So I'm seeing teams do this individually and then they're also uh, rolling them up into group scores there and then I'm seeing branch managers use it with their newer agents um, and to use it to help coach them how to improve and, and kind of look for gaps compared to what they're seeing in their uh, in their office. And so, um, again, this is just that activity piece. And then the cool part is activities creates results. That's the lead piece, right? So you're going to be tracking your leads there. Certainly a best practice with leads is to get them out of the book and into a CRM um, and be tracking them in there. And so, you know, my team, when I was, when I was uh, doing transactions, you know, my lead went in there because I'm on the phone, I'm writing it down, putting their information, and then it would just have a, an X through it as it got into the CRM. So I knew I did the rest of my job to track it, um, you know, through there. Um, but it's just a great, great place to write that down, and, and hopefully there's plenty of them coming in. I think the to-do, to-call, and task list is pretty self-explanatory. It's something we forgot in the original version of it, and now I'm um, having great feedback that it's there. And then kind of the gold box section in the middle, right? And so this is, this is the totals of everything. And again, you're, you're gonna, we're going to talk through the weekly goal setting. We're going to talk through the quarterly goal setting in a minute. But, you know, really you're just going to be tracking at the end of the day so you can track um, at the end of the week and the end of the month and the end of the quarter. And so um, these are the things that, I, that we kind of came up with um, through all that observation and conversation that, you know, that people really uh, wanted and needed to have, right? So, again, I already told you guys, database calls and lead and client calls, um, quality conversations, you know, buyer-seller presentations, right? How many, how many times are we live, right? What are we doing there? Um, prospecting time, right? How much time are you actively, proactively prospecting? Um, and again, we're seeing that that has been a critical factor when um, I'm talking to high-performance realtors about uh, their number one most critical activity, it is blocked prospecting time, right? And so um, those are the people that when I met with them and looked at their planner, they literally had prospecting time highlighted on their calendar. Um, ironically, um, like 99% of them did it before noon. Um, some of them did have an afternoon prospecting time. Those of you who, are, who have read The Conversion Code by Chris Smith, um, he talked about in that book that the best two times to get a hold of a client is, is between 8 and 10 in the morning, and then again between 4 and 6 in the afternoon. And so some people are like, well, no one wants to hear from me in the morning. Well, ironically, the studies show that um, it's actually one of the best times to get a hold of people because they're actually less, uh, you know, maybe they're at work, but they're, they're, they're thinking it's something important when, when you're calling. Um, additionally, he said he, he changed the paradigm. I've always heard seven follow-up calls to get a hold of someone. Their studies now show six. Um, to get to get in contact with 93% of the of the leads that you get, so it's a pretty significant number, and it's that follow up piece and why the proactive prospecting time is critical. Um, I don't think I need to lecture you guys on that. I think you guys are all aware of that. 
Um, and then the other three things, HW notes, handwritten notes, right? Again, a lot of you guys are into that, not everyone, but that's okay. If you don't do them, then don't use that box. Um, real estate reviews, like I, like I said a few moments ago, I think that that's a great opportunity for you. A lot of you are already doing it, but if you're not, it's something to consider. Um, and then last are database ads, right? How many people are getting, am I putting into uh, my CRM this week, right? New people that registered on my website. You know, again, there's all different ways that you're going to track that, but, uh, but it would be great to have an idea, right? How many database ads in a week is leading to more leads and more closed loans? And so um, we're definitely starting to see some momentum there with people tracking that number. Um, those activities will lead to the results over on the right, right? How many buyer prospects did I get? How many seller prospects did I get? Um, how many of those buyers actually got qualified, right? It's one thing to have uh, a buyer prospect. It's a different thing to have someone who actually is pre-qualified to go out and shop or is paying cash. Um, how many listings did I get? How many are in escrow and how many are closed? And so again, we're just tracking from the far left here, the dials all the way to the far right there, the results. So we got activities to close loans results everywhere in between. And again, these may or may not be things that you're using now. And all I would say is try it. You know, if, if you like it, use it. If you don't, then don't use that piece of it. Um, if there's something that you think, gosh, Todd, you just missed the boat on. I can't believe you don't track this. Let me know. Um, Certainly would give you my two cents transparently of why we did or didn't include it. Um, but I do think overall that it's, uh, that it's pretty good uh, based on the feedback that we're getting. So can't wait to hear from you guys. Last piece on the daily tracker is this win section in the bottom left corner. Um, and so again, it's just really the other pieces and we'll sort of talk about the foundational goals, right? I mean, I find that top producers tend to have a really solid morning and evening routine. They tend to exercise at some point um, in their life. Um, they, they tend to spend on time which would be that time working on your business, not in your business, right? Where they're planning out their next CRM drip or they're planning out their next Facebook ad campaign or when they're planning out their next postcard they're going to be mailing to their, um, to their, to their database, whatever that is. It's time working on your business. And then we, of course, left a blank. You can fill in whatever you want there and then you can track a new habit. Um, and then how did I do today? Was I proactive or reactive? Um, did I finish my priorities today before or afternoon? And, you know, I have had some people are like, dude, like, come on, what's up with this win by noon thing? Do I really need to do it by noon? And I say, um, the answer is maybe for you. Um, I, I would wager to say that for most of you, it's yes. Um, what I found was is that the realtors who spent their morning blocked proactively working on their business, doing these activities that we're talking about, making sure they wrote their handwritten notes, making sure that they called their database today, uh, making sure that they did the real estate reviews if it was a real estate review day. Some of them are doing update call days. So, um, you know, again, Tuesday's their day, they're calling all their clients and just giving them an update on their transaction, or maybe it's their transaction manager doing it, but they have it built into their calendar. Um, what we're finding is, is that the people who are proactive in the morning, um, in sales, ironically, this is across all sales organizations. Um, right now, we're kind of engaging in a fairly big study on it, but the people who proactively do what they need to do in the morning are the ones who are completing their activities most of the time. Again, not all of the time. I don't know anyone who wins this every day, um, but I do know teams that it's mandatory that their uh, members of their team are butt in the chair 9 a.m. to noon every day. I know other teams, some, some of them it's 8 to 11. I mean, it's again, two to three hours of this proactive thing. And then the rest of the day, they're reacting. And what could reacting mean? Um, let me in fact show you the weekly calendar. So I'm going to escape out of here for one sec. I'm going to go to the weekly calendar. Um, and then by going to the weekly calendar, I will I'm skip one slide. You guys are, wait, you don't skip that slide, but I'm going to go back to it. Um, but by, by going to the weekly calendar, um, which hopefully you guys see up there now, um, the, the weekly time block piece is that you guys allow your clients to set your schedule. Um, you react to whatever else is going on, oftentimes, not all of you, but a lot of you. And so what I'm, I'm saying is let's just do a paradigm shift of um, being comfortable with the conversation when a client calls you that says, you know, oh, yeah, Mr. Jones, um, I can't wait to get together with you uh, and run you through my listing presentation. Um, you know, I've already got a commitment at 10 a.m. on Thursday. Would it be okay if we, if we did it at 1? Um, what I find is when you learn that script that I already have a commitment at that time, that commitment being to yourself, um, that, that you often will realize that people are like, oh, yeah, that works. Um, you know, if, if Mr. Smith has a $3 million house and he's like, you know what, I'm the busiest CEO you've ever met and I only have time at 10 a.m. on Thursday, you know what, then meet with him at 10 a.m. on Thursday. Maybe if that's the only time he has. But I bet if you just throw out another option or two, that he'll probably take it. Um, and so you have to gauge the, the 
importance and the reality of is that the only time truly they can do it? I find that most of the time that the answer is no, they have another option that'll work and that they're not offended by it because you used a good script, I have a commitment. Um, and then you have the ability to get back to your proactive prospecting during that time. You're gonna nail it, nail those really critical activities that you need to do in order to be the most successful realtor that you can be. And so when I look at these, at the most important time blocks, you know, it's, it's really, you know, taking time to, um, you know, do all of those things. And so you can see like there's, you know, client database calls every day, right? You're clearing your email and your voicemails every day. I would say that email is your, your biggest detractor during that time frame. And so I would just be really careful. I normally would suggest clearing your email after you've done your critical pieces of your day so that you don't then react in the morning. Um, that's for a different call. Um, we are going to do some narrow, more narrow webinars coming up, just things like email, you know, truly as a strategy, um, you know, uh, all different, all different parts of, of what we're talking about here, scripting around some of these different conversations like real estate reviews. Um, and so you can see here, it's kind of got the, uh, the theme days, right? I, I do think the one thing I'll tell you is that the Monday, Friday piece, planning your week on Monday, I think is really critical. Um, and the Friday piece of, um, reviewing your week and closing any open gaps that you have to make sure that you go in the weekend uh, caught up is always critically important. I do think the biggest challenge for you as a realtor is that your clients expect you to work seven days a week, right? Your open houses are on weekends. Uh, I know that you're showing houses on weekends. And so um, that is a challenge, right? That's a huge challenge for you guys. And so I am seeing some realtors who are blocking off um, different days of the week. I'm seeing a lot of Tuesday, Thursdays off, a lot of Tuesday, Wednesdays off. Um, some people try to take Mondays off. Again, I'd be interested to hear from you guys um, later on sort of what your strategy is around how do you buy your personal time back in your business, um, especially if you're a single agent. But, um, but I do think that, uh, you know, this week ahead um, time block, if you just look at it, just think through, is this something I could do, right? Could I actually um, focus my morning on these important priorities um, that Todd is talking about and then and then focus my afternoons on this reaction part. And I do think that meeting with a client and showing houses is a reaction because it's a result of what you did. And, um, and so I do think that, you know, when it comes to the, this Monday through Friday piece, I'm just, again, I'm seeing the realtors who are blocking off days during the week that they're, that they're running the same play on weekends, Saturdays um, more so than Sundays. But, um, but I did see a lot of people are like, oh yeah, I took what you do on Tuesday and that's now my, you know, that's my Saturday. And so again, kind of think through, you know, what that, what that looks like. But I can just tell you that my personal success in sales came from when I got crystal clear on blocking my mornings, doing those activities. Um, and, you know, business went up significantly. Um, you know, it was, I, I forgot the percentage, but it was over 25% the year that I, that I really kind of got uh, uh, crystal clear on, on how to do this in my business. And um, the funny part was, is that the successful teams that I was working with at the time on the real estate side were all doing this as well. I just wasn't smart enough to have, have noticed it earlier with them. Um, I'm going to go real quick back to the, the week ahead time block and, or the week ahead action plan. So one of the things that I talk about here sort of as a critical activity has been um, this idea of um, this week ahead intentionality, right? Being intentional with your week. And so I think that you do have to say, hey, how many how many clients am I going to touch basis with this week? You know, how many real estate reviews am I going to do this week? Um, you know, what is it that I'm really looking to, to get to accomplish? And then there's a the project list, right? I do that for my on time so that I don't have to think about, well, what is, I, what is it I'm going to do today in this hour I've scheduled to do this? Um, but I think the week ahead planning piece is critical. I do it either on Sunday or Monday, depends on sort of how my week goes. And, uh, and I just find it's a great habit. So I go in, um, I actually do the weekly review, and so, you know, you'll see as you guys get your planners, if you haven't gotten them already, um, that the, the weekly review and the week ahead action plan are now on the same page at the end of the week. Um, and so I can tell you that my team takes a picture of it and they send it to me on Monday morning by noon, um, and they, they've gone through, they've graded themselves from the past week, they've totaled up their numbers from the past week, and then they've said, hey, here's what, what I'm going to do this week. And here's where I saw a lift on it, is that when I first – um, ask people to do it in the planner. Because when we were playing around with this, we didn't have the weekly review or the week ahead action plan in there. And so the funny thing is, is what I was seeing was, is that uh, when I first started having my team do this, even though they've been tracking it for a long time, the numbers they were putting in here were just crazy guesses, right? And for you, it's going to be a crazy guess because if you've never tracked how many people you're meeting with and talking to and calling every day, you know, you got to guess out of the first week, which is okay. Um, but what I found was is that some people guess low, some people guess high. Ironically, almost no one guessed accurately. 
Um, but then all of a sudden they saw in, in black and white there on their paper, what did I do last week? And then they, were, they got a little more laser focused on what they were going to do um, this coming week. And then what I found was is that, you know, yeah, they didn't all hit their intentions every week. But what I found is, is two things happened. Number one is, is that they got, they got really clear on what was possible. So they really lasered in on, hey, this is the activity I can do. Um, and they started hitting it more. And then the other part is they actually started increasing it slightly each week. Not every team member, not every week, but all of a sudden someone who was making 100 outbound dials in a week was at 105 or 110. Um, because ultimately, now they're starting to see the momentum. They're starting to see that this, this crazy idea of focusing your morning and tracking your activities is actually working for them. Um, because now they see it themselves in black and white. I always tracked it behind the scenes and I always told them about it, but the fact that they took the time to write it down, the fact that they took the time to create, to, to calculate their own conversion rates. I used to calculate them for them and tell them what they were. It didn't mean as much um, to them as, until they started doing it themselves. And so that piece I think you'll start seeing is gonna be really kind of fun when you start seeing your conversion rate, you start realizing, you know, what is it like? And then you understand how it's calculated. Because again, that's the other thing is you have to always look at how it's calculated. Because sometimes someone says, oh, my conversion rate is X. And you're like, holy smoke, that's crazy. But then you realize that, you know, what they consider a lead and what you consider a lead are two different things. And so, you know, again, the, the definitions of some of this, these things will really matter. But, um, but the week ahead action plan, where I see it really be critical, um, and it's, again, highly used. I forgot it's in the mid, mid to high 80s percent. Again, not 100. Nothing here is 100 percent, except for the daily tracker. The daily tracker is used 100 percent by all the people who use momentum. Um, primary reason they bought it. But I think the people who are intentional and take the time on Mondays to set up their week um, are the ones who are, are getting to the end of the week feeling accomplished. They know they're crystal clear going into the, the, the day to, you know, to what they need to do. And so I think it's just taking that time in the morning. You know, it might only take you 10, 15 minutes. There's other times where it takes me, you know, 45 minutes to an hour if I've got a lot going on. So really just look at the week, plan what it is. It's Monday, right? Who did I take out showing houses to over the weekend? Is there any follow-up I committed to them that I was going to do? Do I need to, you know, do I have a counter offer I'm supposed to respond to? Is there an inspection I need to get planned? It's really just planning out that week when you sit there and do that. Um, weekly planning meeting essentially with yourself um, to figure out what's there, what loops were from the weekend. And then if you fast forward to Friday, um, the reason that we do one on Friday, typically, again, you may find there's a different day of your week that's better is what did I, what, 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 what loops do I have to close, right? You know, what do I, who do I need to talk to before the weekend? Is there someone else I was trying to arrange to show homes to on Saturday that I haven't connected with or, or confirm their appointment? Was there, was there a lead or two that I've been conversing with that I never heard back from? It's really just it's taking a minute to step back, take a deep breath, and look at your week and see what other loops are there that need to be closed. Um, what else is that I need to accomplish today before I go home so I can go in the weekend and rest a little easier, right? Um, and so, so that's a critical piece too. And then the other activities kind of all fall in between. And I showed you that week ahead um, time block. I love it because it, I can look at it visually and see what my week is. Yes, I can also look into my calendar on Outlook on my phone or on my computer and I can see my week as well. I just love having it with me. So that way, um, I don't have to think twice. It's just a couple pages away. Someone says, hey, are you available Friday? You know, at two o'clock, I can look at it and see. Um, and then, you know, I'm ready to rock and roll. And, and so for me, it's been a, definitely a, a, a great tool. But again, you just have to decide how that integrates in with, um, with your day. Um, so I'm just looking, no questions from you guys right now. So let me just kind of skip to the, um, the weekly and monthly review. And, and I think that this, again, this is one of those pieces that at first I didn't think about how important this was going to be to people. Um, this is one of those things that when I actually did my first webinars on there, I didn't even talk about this. I left this slide out and then it was a huge miss because what I realized is, is that this is where people are seeing win by new work. Um, this is where people who track their numbers in last quarter and then they wrote them down after the first month were like, hmm, okay, that's interesting. Um, and then the second month, they're like, oh, wow, now I can compare the two. And then now that people are getting done here this week with Q3, they're actually going to be doing the first quarterly review. And so super excited to get the feedback from people on that. But now we're starting to see people kind of those, the light bulb is going off, the dots are getting connected where they're seeing, you know what, the activity is actually creating results. You know, the fact that I actually was intentional about my morning and I proactively prospect was huge. Um, and now they're starting to see results from it. And they're seeing areas where they can tweak their business, do things differently, learn from others in the community on how they're doing it. Um, and then um, look at next quarter and start setting that intentionality for, um, 
you know, for next, for next quarter. Um, so I think that that is, uh, you know, that's going to be key. Um, all right, someone says my screen is black. That is not good. Um, let's just look at my sharing and see what it says. All right, it should be sharing this. So hopefully you guys are seeing weekly quarterly review. If not, if you guys just real quick grab out that handout in the handout section, you'll see that I've got um, that is on the handout. So you can see it there. Or if you have your book with you, um, look in there. I'm interested. I'll watch the recording of this later. Um, the recording of this will be posted into our private Facebook user group um, within a couple of days. So we're not quite as efficient at figuring that out yet as we should be, um, but it's one of my commitments is to make sure that we get that dialed in uh, going down the road. And so, um, well, I see why. Let's try something else. Hang on. All right. Hopefully you guys are seeing it now. Okay. Um, and so the, this piece is just critical for you to monitor your success. Um, again, going back to the thing is, do I have to win by noon? You know, you don't have to. Um, I've got people who are saying that they're winning by 2 o'clock. And I'm like, all right, well, hey, that's awesome. Because the funny thing is I say, gosh, I've been doing this for 25 years. And now at 2 o'clock, I don't know what to do with myself. I mean, think about that for a second. Think about somebody who's used to running on the treadmill every day of work, like that old hamster wheel thing, right? Just spinning, 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 working hard, working hard, working hard. Um, it was, you know, lucky to do that by 5 o'clock, all of a sudden now being done by 2. Um, they've got a goal to get done by noon in the future, but, you know, who cares, right? If you're winning your day by 2 o'clock and you actually have the rest of the day to kind of own yourself and do whatever you want, and, you know, set appointments or proactively prospect for new business, I mean, that is just huge. Um, again, I'm also seeing people that are like, well, I did all my lead calls in the morning, and now I can actually proactively do them in the afternoon. And, and again, part of my point around that is, is it's not that, um, not that I don't think you're going to make your lead calls in the afternoon, you know, but you just have to assess, is, do I make those calls every day like I'm supposed to, or do some days I get distracted, or some days am I showing property? So there's some days a week where I'm really only doing lead calls, you know, one or two days a week or two or three days a week versus every day of the week like I should be doing. And that's where this morning ritual really will take off for you. As far as um, the conversion piece, all you're really doing there is taking the numbers from the weeks before, adding them up, and then doing the math. So I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, hopefully um, that makes sense to you guys. I'm, I'm open for feedback there, but it's been one of the areas where I haven't gotten a whole lot of um, argument. That seems to be one of the areas where people are um, kind of biggest aha, like I said, and growing the most. Um, so I just threw up the uh, quarter ahead action plan, and this is where I was normally starting the presentation, and now I got smarter, and this is where now I am ending the presentation um, because I was talking about setting up your quarter without actually setting up all these things. And so um, all we've done really here is just create a, a section for your goals in this area. What am I trying to do? And again, for those of you who are brand new, this is like pulling numbers out of thin air. Like I don't know you and I don't know your business. I can't really do this. Unless you've been tracking any of these things, then it's going to be hard. Um, to, to do the target activities at the top. But here's what I think you can do. I think you can do the target results at the bottom because you should know how many closed deals you have in a week or a month, right? So that should be something that hopefully you guys can do. And then eventually we'll work backwards on this course. But really what I love is your fourth quarter goals to be in there. You know, how much production do I want to do? How many families do I want to serve? Um, and then again, work backwards, and I think when it comes to Q1 next year, you'll have results from this year that we'll use as our starting point. You know, you may finish up and say, gosh, you know what I did? I did seven database calls a day on average. Um, I did, you know, 22 lead and client calls a day on average, right? I met with, you know, six buyers or sellers in a week or one buyer and a seller a week, whatever that number is. And so next quarter, we'll be able to fill it in more. But we're going to start at the bottom here and work backwards and fill this in as we can start filling it in. Um, but ultimately, certainly I would encourage you to guess, right? Good guesstimate. Let's do a good job estimating what you think it's going to take. Um, but just know that this would be something that we'll be able to use more in the future. And then I love these kind of foundational goals and then sort of the critical relationships in your pick group. So foundational goals, again, I talked already about productivity. I'm a huge fan of that. And I just think these are the things that are critical in your um, foundation um, as a realtor, right? Um, we got to get sleep if we're going to work well. I don't think there's a whole lot of argument these, these days. The science on that is good. Exercise, again, I think is important. You may not. That's okay. Um, on time. I think that people who are spending time working on their business, that's really critical. You may say, well, Todd, I'm on a team. I'm a team member. I don't, I don't set up systems. That's okay. Then this is less critical to you. But for everyone else who's doing their own business or running a team or running themselves, spending time to proactively plan is going to be a critical piece. And so again, we'll be doing some upcoming webinars on on time and talk about that and setting it up. But 
Um, again, that morning time block piece is critical. And then, of course, real estate reviews. Again, what I'm seeing in, uh, in the repeat and referral business that obviously keeping in touch with the clients is sort of a no-brainer. But I don't see that every realtor does it. Um, I talk to realtors, you know, day in and day out, and they're like, oh, yeah, you know, I do it sometimes. Or I'm just, uh, I got this referral from the Smith family who I did three transactions for. And I'm like, oh, awesome, you've been keeping in touch with them. Oh, no, I just, they just called me out of the blue. And so, um, you know, you want your clients to remember you. You guys know the statistics that have been out there by, the, by NAR that, that most uh, clients do not remember their realtor's name uh, six months after they bought a home. And you don't want to be one of those statistics. So um, you've got to do it. So the easiest one, you should call them more than once a year. I don't need to tell you that, but the easiest one is at least call them once a year and say, hey, congratulations. You know, your house that you paid 300,000 for is now worth 310,000. Um, I mean, that's just such an easy call and a great way to, to get uh, potential referrals. And so the quarter ahead piece, I think, is a, a really critical piece and just kind of be looking um, bigger picture. Um, all right, so we're rolling like the last 10 minutes. I'm just gonna close out here with a little bit of time for um, q and A. I'm going to, um, just sort of let you know, I'd love you to engage with the tribe. We're gonna to continue to do these webinars. The best place to find out about them is on our Facebook page. We've got a public page that's just win by noon where I'm gonna advertise stuff. We've got the secret group. Reach out to me, I'll definitely be happy to connect you to the secret group. Um, and then you can kind of see there. And then um, best way to reach me is um, Todd at win by noon. Um, I'll, hopefully that will show up on the screen in a minute. Um, and uh, the Todd at Win by Noon, you know, I'm, I'm not on email all day, every day, but I've communicated with a lot of you who are on this webinar um, via email already. Um, I'm always happy if you're really struggling or just have some questions, you know, uh, to, to jump on the phone. So shoot me an email and then we can, uh, you know, we can totally make that happen. Um, and then, you know, really from a, uh, a questions perspective, um, I would love to uh, hear what is um, going on. I got a great question uh, from my good friend, Chris. Are you gonna put it into an app so you can use your phone to input your data? The answer is yes, I'm targeting Q1 for that. Um, and so uh, I'll be probably putting it out there once we do a beta test. Uh, we'll have a beta test up at some point and certainly anyone who wants to um, be a part of that, we can be. You know, kind of as I mentioned, I mean, that's the, the only other thing that we haven't done that people have asked for is an online version. And I, I think it'll be a really good companion. It's kind of funny. I was talking to a commercial realtor yesterday, and uh, he told me that um, in his office that, because uh, I showed him my planner, in his office he said it's really funny. He said the young guys all say that they do everything online on their phones. And he says the old guys all carry around day planners and, 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 and go old school and write stuff down. And he said the funny thing was is that he was – kind of having a little debate with a guy about it. You know, this guy's a little fiery sometimes. Um, and he, he, his point that he won the debate he fell with was when he said, you know what, the funny thing about it is, is that um, almost everyone in the top 10 uses a handwritten planner. They're actually using the old school piece of it. And the funny part is I didn't realize that this guy's son is now a commercial mortgage guy. He actually ordered a planner for his son uh, this morning. So I thought that was, uh, I thought that was, was apropos. But um, so yeah, we will do something. I think the biggest benefit there is going to be what I mentioned before with the online scoreboard. I think that when conversion rates seem to be something that everyone really wants to know, right? They really want to know like, hey, how's my conversion rate? Um, and so I think for all you realtors, that's going to be an awesome tool to see, um, you know, how do I compare to all the other realtors who are using an online system like Boomtown or, you know, Commissions Inc. or one of those? How do I compare to a realtor who's using Zillow for leads and their database for leads. How do I compare to another realtor who's only, who's only using, um, you know, who's only doing Sphere? Um, how do I how do I compare to other luxury agents who are doing this? Because you know, again, we're going to kind of be able to dissect that community and sort of see and interact and and connect with people. So that'll be kind of fun, uh, fun piece of it. Any other things that you guys think would be good ideas to have in the online piece? Let me know. I would love. I would certainly love to hear it. That's. Um, I, I don't profess to know it all, um, and so really what I've, what I've learned, as I said, was really from just talking to you guys, observing what you guys do, um, asking questions, and then letting you guys use it and try it. And so I think just like the mortgage version that um, now is a better product for Q4 2017 than it was in Q3 because of feedback, you know, I think that Q1 real estate agent version will probably be better than Q4 real estate agent version. And so that's really where I love, uh, you know, I love this community. Um, again, most of you, uh, 
I guess half of you had, are brand new to it, right? So let me know what questions you guys have. You guys are, are certainly really of interest to me because I want to get feedback from all of you. Um, again, a lot of you are just getting started with it, so anything that I can do to help you guys get started would be fabulous. Those of you who are experienced, I think a lot of those are the loan officers who are on the call who are learning this so that they can sit down with their realtors and teach it to their realtors. Anyone who wants to teach this, if you've got a team or a brokerage and you want to teach it within your brokerage, reach out to me. I've got that PowerPoint available so that you can teach it that way. Um, anybody who um, you know, has, has any questions or wants any sharpening on it, let me know. We will be putting this recording up and uh, so that you, you guys can, can jump on there. Um, the, uh, all right, thank you. Leo said he started using mid-August the, the loan officer version and loved it. So that's awesome. Glad to have uh, loan officers here. And so it's, um, you know, it's kind of funny. I can never quite figure out what to call this group. I call it a tribe a lot. I call it a movement a lot. I call it a revolution. Um, I just think that there is opportunity for us to all grow, right? I'm not here to profess that I know it all. I'm not here to profess that this is the perfect system. But what I can tell you is that there's pieces of this that work. I can tell you that success leaves clues and that the people who are focusing their activities in the morning, being proactive instead of reactive, being intentional with what they, what they do and schedule in a week and in a day um, are growing. And so my encouragement to all of you is to uh, give it a try and um, give me your feedback. Let me know. Um, I have launched a couple of you that are on the, phone, on, the, on the webinar today. So you know this. If you've got a team, um, I'm happy to engage with you guys as a group and help you get it launched. If you're trying to launch it for your branch or whatever it is that your organization looks like, you know, let me know. Um, I'd love to connect with you. I know some of you on here are loan officers who will be at Sales Mastery next week. I will be there. Um, let me know. Those of you who are realtors who have events coming up that you think, gosh, Todd, you're crazy if you don't show up here with your planner and, and show it off, uh, let me know. I would love to know what, what's going on out there in your world. I, um, again, I love nothing more than connecting and learning. So I appreciate everyone uh, for taking the time uh, to be here and sticking it out through my technologically challenged parts of uh, of this piece and uh, just know from the bottom of my heart I'm really grateful for you guys on taking what's your most important commodity and, and spending it here with uh, with me and with this community and uh, just know that I'll continue to do anything I can do to help you uh, be successful with uh, what we talked about so uh, thank you again for your time and uh, I look forward to uh, hearing from uh, any and all of you and, and helping in any way that I can um, have a fabulous day. I am Todd Bookspan, and I am going to sign 